So first, without further ado, let's get into our interview with Nori H. Now, as I say, it's been a lot of work this week and literally up until five minutes ago, I was still making changes. So the live interviews are not live. They are recorded. And um, the rendering was taking a long time, but, you know, as we persever, uh, we're going to save Bailey P. And we're going to go with Noreen, Nori H. Art. Welcome, Nori H. Art, Art to <laughs> Foot Culture. <laughs> My friend, Noreen, thank you so much for joining us. That's all right. Um, I really wanted to get you on because... We've, you know, we've we've had a lot of mu- we've got a lot of music tonight. Um, mm-hmm. We've had actors, we've had a lot of musicians, to be honest with you. And I just thought this is a, a, another kind of creative um, endeavor, um, and this kind of like digital art fascinates me. Um, not many mm-hmm. people know, but I actually went to university, and my first degree, my Bachelor of Science, was in architectural technology. Oh, spit! I didn't so, know that. AutoCAD <laughs> and like like designing like the design of buildings and all that kind of stuff I love all that stuff so this is fascinating to me so just tell us a little bit for people that don't know give us a bit of background on your artistic history I know you come from quite an artistic family Nabil's mm-hmm. sister is also a very creative person tell us a bit about that um well I guess it was just it was kind of always encouraged in us when we were really little um to always kind of explore ourselves in an artistic way, whether that was poetry, writing stories, drawing. Um, My dad and my mom kind of were always very, very encouraging in saying, well, just explore yourselves through these means as well, not just, um, you know, through your education and through like, you know, maths and science and all very strict kind of educational means, more like, you know, explore yourselves through these other means too. Um, And I did art in A-levels as well, but I kind of have always done it before that. And uh, it was never really, oh no wait, I didn't do it in A-levels, GCSEs. Um, But it never really, like in terms of getting an education in that way in school, art never really suited me because it was so, it was so strict and it was like, well, look at these artists and copy what they're doing and look at these artists and copy what they're doing. And I was just like, well, I don't really want to, do that so Mm -hmm. I stopped pursuing it um educationally but I always did it myself so I've I've bought courses and I've done things online and I've I've always just done it in myself yeah um so yeah so I guess mostly I'm self-taught um but I'm trying to to just go back to fundamentals and learn like anatomy and how light works and things like that um yeah there's so many aspects especially digitally like we'll get into that but um mm-hmm. when did you when did you oh, how were you able to monetize your work did it happen like kind of organically or did you kind of have to go to, through a process to monetize it or um I just posted a lot of my work online and my first ever commission was just some guy that saw my work and liked it and said well how much if I want this and I want you to send it out to me it was a guy in America and then from there, it was like small commissions here and there. And then um, the National Media Museum commissioned me twice, wow. um, which was, well, that was amazing. Um, and, you know, I get regular commissions, you know, on a, I'd say on a monthly basis, which is nice on top of, you know, regular income. It's nice to just have a little bit more to put in the savings. So it just, it did just happen organically. But I guess I was also advertising myself a lot by putting my work out there. Yeah. Um, who are some of your inspirations like other artists or other types of work other themes genres um I guess for for the main part it's kind of South Asian Islamic art your geometric patterns you're very almost flat against the wall kind of but beautifully embroidered dresses and skirts and you know uh, ethereal looking women and men and things like that um And then there's just like artists online, like there's an artist called Alex Cho that I follow on Instagram, who's a Korean artist and he's insane. His work is insane. Um, And there's a a comic book that I read called Lore Olympus. And that's another one that I take a lot of inspiration from because it's storytelling as well as drawing and 
and I'm trying to kind of dip into that because I write novels and I right. draw but I've always done them so separately um and I'm trying to kind of merge them now a little bit yeah like I, I'm I'm big into anime as you may or may not know <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> so I, you know I love all that kind of anime stuff and um graphic novels um I'm, I'm really into that and I definitely think you there's a market for your work your work's amazing um thank you what challenges have you faced in your industry either being um a northern artist being a working class mm. artist or just being a digital artist um i think the biggest thing that i had to overcome in myself was obviously i'm i'm muslim and in terms of uh drawing people um in terms of like I don't know if it's a mainstream opinion or if it's a, a, a lesser opinion, I'm not really sure. But like drawing eyes and drawing people and animals and things like that, it's like, well, you you know, it's really looked down on. Um, and so when I was like 17 or 18, I got very into Islam. And at that point, I was also very at conflict with myself and my art and I just ripped everything up. I got rid of everything. So I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to disappoint God, yes, so yeah. to speak. Um, but then I guess I kind of had to settle myself down because that was all, it was anxiety and it was me stressing myself out and it was me reading people's opinions and saying, well, you know, well, this is it. This is, you know, what I have to do. And yeah. so I stepped back and I was like, well, I'm not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. um, it's just me and my art. and that's that's all there is and it's not this big thing it's not this big oh my god you're gonna go to hell kind yeah, of a thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess that's that's like the biggest challenge that I faced um but other than that it's being South Asian and an artist and you know saying to people yeah I do art and it's so much less impressive than yes I'm a lawyer <laughs> I know I, yeah I hear you I hear you yeah you know what I mean um yeah. so yeah couple of challenges but you know I, I kind of had to go back to how my mom and dad raised me which was it's it's fine God is not that small you need to calm yourself down so <laughs> you know yeah. um, I just had to relax myself a little bit you mentioned like um, getting into storytelling like storytelling and visuals putting the two worlds together if quarantine wasn't an issue and money wasn't an issue and obstacles weren't an issue, like what kind of work would you want to make? Um, well, the quarantine is helping me, if anything, because it's making me sit down and do it. Right, um, okay. When, when, when I'm not at home, I have the choice to not work and to not get into it. But because I'm home and because, you know, I'm only doing little bits here and there for work work, um, I have to... I have to do it and so I've been writing up um this story that I'm working on right now and I've kind of been fleshing out the character a little bit more um I'm just doing some research on like historical India because that's where it's based right um so I'm just trying to do that right now which is not the easiest thing <laughs> that's nice actually because I mean I've been telling people that I've been having a bad week this week like I've thrown myself into work but this week mm. it kind of took its toll a little bit and I think a lot of people are yeah. feeling like that so it's nice and refreshing to hear that there's somebody out there that's kind of like yeah I'm actually all right I'm thriving in this situation oh no no, no there's no there's no thriving there's no <laughs> thriving I'm struggling so hard but I'm like, I'm trying to at least do, like, at least get a little bit done so I can, I, I can get to the end of the day and say, okay, at, at least I've written a sentence. At least I've thought about the story. At least yeah. I've drawn yeah. a little bit, you know, like just getting small bits done in the day. Yeah. Giving yourself like a little mini goalpost, I guess. That's, that's yeah, kind of fine. what I've done with this show. This show became mm. a, a mini goalpost to keep my sanity and now it's just turned into a monster. Um, but that's another, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. Um, so I'm going to show so, um, some of your... I've got three clips of your artwork here. Um, mm -hmm. And there's one beautiful design of our very good friend, Zodwa Nioni. <laughs> hey, Izzy. Hey. Um, Okay, so I'm going to show our little clips. Bear with, bear with.
So here is something there. Zodwa. Big up Zoo. It's almost a self portrait there, Noreen. And one of her commissions there for the Pennycrest magazine. Z again before we get back into the interview um no no we'll go back to the interview so before i let you go just a few things what kind mm -hmm. of support do you think um digital artists need either in this in this environment or or before quarantine I think a lot of the time uh, digital art is looked at like it's kind of the easier form, like it's it's easier than traditional art or it's uh, it's not as good because, well, you've just done it on your iPad or your tablet or whatever it is. So it's not proper art. I think just, it's not even, it's not even in terms of like support that's needed. It's just uh, people need to understand that behind digital art, there's a whole traditional art education. So we wouldn't be able to do that if there's not that original education in the first place. Right. Um, so we do, we have done traditional medium art on paper and pencil and we, we do do that. It's just, we choose to edit and paint and do all the rest of it on tablets just to clean it up. And it's more convenient. Yeah. You know, easy to share, I guess, when you've got, picture mm. that you can just share quickly on Instagram and stuff like that for yeah. other people to see your your catalog um for anybody who's at home and has really wanted to start drawing digitally creating um art digitally what kind of are there any apps like basic cheap easy things that people can start with uh there's an app that I use on my iPad uh called Procreate um and it's like it costs eight pound it's not a subscription thing it's just one payment of eight pounds and it does everything that Photoshop does. You can animate on it, you can draw on it, you can paint, it's the layers, it's all of it. Um, I mean, the Photoshop that you're getting on the iPad, I think costs like 30, 40 pounds a month and oh, it's wow. a subscription. Yeah. Um, so don't get that. Get Procreate. It's so cheap. You can also get free apps. I'm not sure what they're called, but I can do research on it um but procreate is what i use and it's it's just i mean it's cheap and i don't have to spend more than you know eight pound on it which is what bargain yeah. <laughs> especially when none of us have got a real job anymore bargains bargains <laughs> um thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it i can't wait till we can meet all our friends hey what hey what's up world crew um and go for shisha <laughs> Um, although I do not we do not endorse any kind of smoking in this house no. or on this program. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> also, Ramadan Mubarak, and I love you, and Thank I'll see you. you soon. I love you too. Bye. Okay, so um, before we leave, we've got a little clip from Nori H. Art um, showing us her process. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing is um, obviously, I'm using an iPad and not everybody's going to have that. I use an uh, an app called Procreate. So if you have an iPad Pro, I recommend the app. It's really good for drawing. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to get yourself some references. And the easiest place for that is uh, Pinterest. Um, so what I'll usually do is, like, you know, I don't know. Like, say, for example, I, I want to draw a woman. I'll look for references of women. Um... So if I just go on this character design one, so there's a, that's a cool thing. And what's really cool about Pinterest is if you zoom in, then it'll also give you loads of other references that are very similar. So I'm just going to stick with this one for now. And then I screenshot that. And then you can just go back to the app and then obviously if you've not got procreate then you can either use like your phone screen for this or you can just um you know just use whatever you can print it out or whatever you need to do and so there so i've added the reference onto the drawing so now it's easy for me to take it and bring it back 
Okay, so from this reference, I've kind of come up with a, a kind of idea of, of what I want my drawing to look like. So I've just plotted out very briefly the kind of shape I want the drawing to take, which will be like this. This is the side of the face, and it's kind of turning from the back, if that makes sense. Um, and then this is the nose here, and then this is where the lips will go. And this is the eyes, and the eyebrows will go here. So already you've got kind of something being plotted out um, just right after in the reference. Okay, so once you've done like a brief sketch of kind of where you want uh, the shape of the sketch to be, um, you can start adding in details. I usually do it in red so it's easy to see. Um, so, it, you know, it's, that's, that's the general shape of the drawing and I've added in the eyebrows and the eyes and the hair um, and all the rest of it in red. Um, it just makes it easier to see, but you don't need to do it in red if you're not, if that's not what, what you're going for. If, if it's harder to do it in red and then rub it out, then you don't need to. But if you're working digitally, using red is, it, it works just to help see you through the layers. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, then you can start building up the details that you can see I've done here um, but you can see that there's obviously still the red marks underneath and I'll get rid of that layer later um, but basically you just wanted to add more details in kind of create the the, the general feel of the piece um, which kind of brings you to something like this Obviously, everybody's drawing style is different, so you're not going to have this. You're going to have, you know, whatever kind of drawing style you have. So yeah, they're the general outlines. Okay, so uh, once you've got the outlines, you can start adding colour. So basically what I've done is I've, um, I've done a shade underneath. I can, I can pull... So I've done a single shade underneath here and I've used this smudge tool uh, to kind of blend it out a bit so it, it kind of creates slight blending. And then I have added a blush tone over the top just to get it a little bit more life. Um, with the hair I've not really done much, um, you know it's just a... Uh, just making the hair black really that's all I've done um, but I've also blended it as you can see the the hair here that I've this is the hair I've blended and this is the hair that I've not blended so the hair that's obviously not blended is coming out a lot darker but once you get the blending tool and you start blending it outwards You can see where it starts to create that kind of and you, you do have to go over and over and over like it's not um, it's not just like a one-time thing you go you go over it a couple times and you know you, you kind of create the look of the, the piece in general And then once all that's done, you can start adding in details like like this, and like this, and like that. Just to kind of give your piece that little bit of uh, extra characterization, I guess. So if I show you all the layers now that I've used, there's the initial image. There it is. So there's the initial image and then there's what I've taken from it and obviously just using a reference you don't it's it's not it's not copying the image it's just taking little bits that you like so I like the the jewelry detailing and the earrings so I did that and then obviously 
I added a lot of a lot more hair and and flowers and stuff but you just got to take inspiration from wherever you wherever you find it so yeah that's my general process thank you That was my amazing friend, the wonder, the artist, Nori H. Art. Um, follow her socials at Nori H. Art if you can donate to her. She has her own PayPal that you can give her tips straight to her, her own PayPal. It's paypal.me forward slash Nori H. Art. Nori H. Art. Um, or whatever comes into foot culture, we're going to share with all the cast, all the artists, like I said. Um, follow her, share her work. Um, big her up. I can see you're already bigging her up in the chat. Um, I can see comments from Gemma Andre. I can see comments from Nabila. 